I say that? Leg Legro. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, it's uh, time for the part two review of the Legro, whatever you want to say, Legaro, whatever it is, I'll link it down below anyway, but it's time for the part two review. So if you haven't seen part one, go check that out. I'll leave a little link up here, but uh, this is time for the flight footage where this thing absolutely rips round. And the reason this quad was special was because it was under the 250 gram mark with a battery, which was very, very important to a lot of people because there's a lot of laws out there in some countries where that's like sort of the critical point that you've got to be under or you know that or other otherwise things happen but uh, what we're going to be doing in this video we're going to be sticking on the bench I'm going to show you how mine went together and actually where I sort of had a little crash and broke my well Trevor crashed and broke mine I'll oh, should be an easy fix though and then uh, we're going to take it out and we're going to rip it around show you some flight footage and we'll also get grumpy Trev having a good time with this thing as well anyway enough rambling from me let's stick it on the bench and get started alrighty so here it is on the bench and first I'm going to just show you this picture so this is what it originally looked like from the side you can see the receiver was very nice and snug fitting in right there but what I actually had to do, because I wanted to hook this up to my Turnergy Evolution, uh, I was putting in one of the IA6C receivers, and even though I've trimmed that down, <coughs> it's, excuse me, it's probably a little bit big to be fitting inside this quad. So what I've been doing, I've just been taping it to the outside right here, so that's how it's been flying around, and it was, it, look, it's been totally fine, but it's not quite as snug or not quite as neat as it could be, because I mean, like, when this thing uh, didn't have this here and just had the normal receiver inside, it looked super clean. So... Here's an example, like if you use your Free Sky or something like that, I've got one of the little mini uh, micro Free Sky receivers. I could simply put that in there a lot easier than what I'm using on here than the IA6C. So that's one little change that I did. And then the only other thing before we jump in, fly it around and have a bit of a look is I should have done this. Look, and I said this in the part one video, I should probably have zip tied this down. I've had it. Well, I didn't crash this. Actually, Trevor crash this and uh, my little battery leads just come off the pad right there so I'm just gonna have to solder that down but that's the only two little things that I wanted people to be aware with so uh, aware of so number one you're gonna have to think carefully about your receiver it's not gonna be a problem if you use a small one but something large like an IA6C or an original D4R2 or something like that it's not gonna fit too well uh, and number two uh, yeah, make sure you zip tie down your little battery lead because otherwise if you get unlucky in a crash You might find you're ripping off one of the pads. Hopefully you guys can see that anyway Anyway, they're the only two little changes I wanted to show you Let's cut down to the field and you can see this little monster absolutely kill it when it's zipping around So let's cut down to the field in three two one. How do you say this thing? Legro Legaro Legro That's how I'd say it <laughs> Radio down here in the field, super excited to rip this little bad boy, the Legro, Legar, whatever you want to call it, about to put some packs through it, but uh, we're not going to get any HD footage on this one, or I'm not thinking so anyway, it'll probably be some DVR, because it's a 4 inch, uh, we're trying to keep the weight down, so let's uh, put some packs on it and rip it around, and we'll also get Grumpy Trev to give it a try out as well, so he's behind me somewhere, anyway, let's, uh, let's put a pack on it and do it, alright? Alrighty, so this is its very first maiden flight and super cool we actually get some audio because we're using the Swift 2 or the Runcam Swift 2 so that's very nice and a nice little OSD as well so you can see it's pretty quick I think I take it around the trees up here and give it a bit of a punch and we're up pretty high but I want you to think this thing is absolutely burning across the treetops so a very very fast quad especially considering it's up so high and it's only a four inch so this is its maiden flight I think I'm going to bring it down onto the track soon it is going to take a little bit to get used to and uh, the laps do get a little bit quicker as we go through you know as I just sort of get the hang of it and sort of get the feel of this quad but a very very stable a very very fast quad and definitely very snappy in the turns and I don't know if that's because it's got such high kV motors but it felt really really solid in the air almost uh, one, one thing that was very apparent it was super light so it felt very very agile and when you sort of flick the sticks in a direction it was more than willing to sort of jump that direction so that's something you need to be uh, sort of I guess on point when you're flying around because it was a almost like a very very snappy almost like less expo than what I'm used to so a very very responsive little quad there you can see a little punch and already I'm up super high and you can see just how quick it is very very snappy to fly around anyway so I guess for track flying uh, something like this would definitely, if you took this to the right course, I definitely think a 4 inch like this would be uh, faster on the right track, not faster in general, but faster on the right track than some of the bigger 5 inch brothers out there because uh, it's just, if the course is right, it's a bit of a snappy course, uh, I definitely think you might be better suited going for a 4 inch if you had some, a little bit of a flip there, it's always fun to throw in those little tricks. 
But if you had a really, really, I guess, tight little snappy course, uh, maybe 5 inch isn't the way to always go. I reckon some people would absolutely kill it when they're flying around with these 4 inches. You'd have to be a really good pilot though, because uh, in my experience, uh, it was very, very snappy and almost like a little bit too responsive to fly for me anyway. But overall, uh, when I was first getting used to this, and Trevor found this as well, it was kind of easier to fly this thing around a little bit quick versus the 5 inch. The 5 inch took a bit more practice and a bit more uh, getting used to on this little track and look it's not that much of a difficult track but uh, this 4 inch felt right at home on sort of a medium sized course I guess like that. So very very fun, super little responsive quad and I really like how it's keeping under that 250 gram limit uh, so that should make, I'm really excited for sort of what the future holds for these sort of ultra light uh, quads on the 4 inch thing and it handled pretty well until Trevor, so you can notice I don't have any oscillations, but uh, yeah, we did have a little bit, I did have a little bit of a crash a little bit later on, and I think I might have had a bent prop last time when I gave it to Trevor, so uh, anyway, let's check out what Grumpy Trev thinks and uh, give him a bit of a turn at the sticks. Uh, what's this thing called? Leg... Leg run. Bloody something. <laughs> I still can't say the name. Right now, so I've been flying this thing around. What I'm gonna do, let's give it to Grumpy Trev because he's pretty excited to check it out as well, so uh, let's see what he thinks. Oh, a nice little frame. What do they call this thing, Stu? Uh, don't ask me. I don't know how to pronounce it. Why do they name quads the sh you can't pronounce? <laughs> I think it's Italian for light. That's what people are saying in the comments. Yeah, I'll get in and can't pronounce it, but we'll give it a go. Yep, sounds good. Let's do it. All right, Trev, talk to me. I think you might have better prop than this. Bit of oscillations? Yeah, a little bit. Jeez, it's got some grunt. It is fast. Uh, hang on. It's fast. Did I say it was fast? A lot of trees around here guys. Where the f Yeah look, it's uh, it's fast, I like it. For a 4 inch this is pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's as smooth as anything else I've flown though, it's, it's alright. We I did have a crash on those props. Before. Yeah well that's true, it's uh, Stu give me something bet to fly. Thanks Stu. Oh yeah look, I, this is faster. Oh it was that, go the right way. It's pretty cool. This track is certainly suited more to a 4 inch. This is fast around here. I can't go this fast with a chameleon so there you go. Oh, this is this rocks. I like it. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> For the weight of this thing. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's my quad, Trevor? Bloody tree. Uh, <laughs> well, it, okay. it was good, Stu. All right, so Trevor's <laughs> crashed my quad into the top of one of those trees. Uh, but so give me a rundown before we go and get it down. What did you think of that for under 250 grams? For under 250 grams, I hope it was cheap because it's stuck up in that tree. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, look, it's it flew really well. I liked it for something that's small. That's it was pretty quick around this track. Yeah, nice little quad. A grumpy Trev rating out of 10. Ah, oh, look, I'd give that probably a seven. Rightio, so there it is. There's my review to the Lagara, Lagara, whatever you want to call this. The links are down below in the description anyway. But there's my part two review, and it definitely lives up to the hype. I knew that this thing was going to be fast, and uh, it, I definitely wasn't let down. This thing was an absolute weapon, and I know Grumpy Trev loved flying around as well, and it was super quick. And I think a big part that that comes down to, it's all about these, uh, these Ford and 07 size motors with a light prop, with a high KV are absolute weapons. And I know there's some other quads out there as well, like I want to check out some from Catalyst Machine Works and some other ones, some other people working on those sort of super light four inch races that are definitely going to be awesome in the future. So stay tuned because I can't wait to get those on the channel as well. But other than that, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying. Trevor, can you just explain what happened? What are you doing? We're uh, trying to recover this quad because it had bent props. It was out of control when Stu gave it to me, and uh, it, uh, the tree got in the way of my precise precision flying, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> up. <laughs> Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.